But as for me, I trust in you, O oh Lord. I say you are my God. Psalm 31, verse 40. Psalm 17, verse 8. Keep me as the apple of eye. Add me under the shadow of your wings. Amen. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Amen. Proverbs, one, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord in all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Amen. Psalms chapter 32 verse 7. He is my hiding place. He preserves me from all trouble. He surrounds me with songs of deliverance. Amen. Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Amen. Luke ten sixteen. He who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. He who rejects you, me rejects him who sent me. Proverbs chap no, Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 No one can serve two masters. He will either love one and hate the other, else be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and man. Proverbs 21 2 For the way of every man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. Hallelujah. Today we are going to talk about the Word of God. The Word of God, yes? So, I have explained this long time ago. A man, when uh, he, he was friends with a lawyer, and then he went to the lawyer's office. But the lawyer was not a believer, the man was a believer. So, he said to the lawyer, in the Bible, it says this, it says that. And in the Bible, it says this and it says that. And the lawyer said, okay, where in the Bible does it say that or this or that? He said, I don't know exactly. I have to look it up. And the lawyer said, you see all these books? Have you been to a lawyer's office? It's got a thousand books in it, yes? He said, I know every one of those books. I know the law of the land. You have one Bible and you don't know it. Well, do you understand? You have one word of God, one revelation from Christ, from God. Revelation of Christ, yes? And you don't know it. That's why we must study the word of God. Yes? Now, when I was studying in school and in college, we had freshmen, sophomore, junior, and senior. For senior was 12th grade, junior was 11th grade, sophomore was 10th grade, and freshman was Ninth grade, yes. Same thing in college. You have four years of college. You're, you're either a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, or a senior. Do you understand? So you have four years. Now, freshman is very clear. Yes, you are fresh. You don't know anything. But then you graduate to become a sophomore. You know what the word sophomore means? Ah, so it's a putting together of two words. 
Yes, one is Sophia. You know what Sophia means? Wisdom. Yes. The other one is moron. You know what moron means? A fool. Someone who doesn't know anything. A sophomore is a wise fool. So someone who's in 10th grade will know that they will think that they know everything, but they know nothing. They're a wise fool. Don't be a sophomore when it comes to the Bible. Do you understand? So then you graduate to become a junior soph. Then a senior soph. Now that has become only junior and senior. Of You don't become a junior sophomore, yeah? Because more is more. Do you understand? So what I'm trying to say is that you must know the word of God thoroughly as best as you know how. And you will keep learning and learning. And this is a lifelong journey. Do you understand? You and I, I'm learning new things. I'm finding strength in, in the Bible. Do you understand? Yes? Let's go to 2 Timothy 2.15. says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. So, the Bible that you have is the word of truth. Yes? And you must study that diligently. Do you understand? Who do you have to be approved by? Your father, or your mother, or your pastor? By God, yes? To be what? To be a worker who need not be ashamed. The guy at the lawyer's place was ashamed because he did not, not, not know the word. He, do you understand? Do you understand? So this is why you should study the word of God properly. Yes? So since you are there, can you read 2 Timothy three sixteen to 17? Jake, can you read that? 2 Timothy 3.16-17 2 Timothy 3.16-17 says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction for instruction in righteousness that a man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work so you are all men and women of God. And all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Sometimes we lose that simplicity in Christ by saying there is additional information to be gained from extra biblical material. That may be so, but that additional material or information will not get you saved, will not thoroughly equip you, not for the work God has ordained for you, for your own work and for something else, for research, all is good, but it's not scripture. Do you understand? Yes? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. This is why I stick to the word of God. Do you understand? Though I know a lot of extra biblical material, and I have friends who are who have gotten their PhD in this. I don't go by that. Do you understand? I go by what the Bible tells me because it's the ins it's given by the inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction for instruction in righteousness, that a man of God may be complete. Don't you want to be complete? Yes. And thoroughly equipped for every good work. Do you understand? Yes. So this is what happens when you study the word of God. When you don't study the word of God, you will do what is right before your eyes. You won't do what is wrong. No, you will do what is right. What 
we think is right may not be the right thing by God. Do you understand? If you go to Judges chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. Yes. Now, the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt by the mighty hand of God. And this is talking about the next generation. It says, because they didn't read their Bibles per se, because they didn't know their God, they did evil in the sight of their God. Do you understand? And they served other gods. This is what happens when you don't know the word of God. As far as they're concerned, they're doing something good. Do you understand? The whole book of Judges is about that. Then God sends a reminder by the way of a judge. And when the judge comes and rules the land and highlights what God has said, then they all come back to the Lord. Do you understand? And when that judge dies, they fall away. And then God raises up another judge. And then people come back to the Lord. And then when he dies, they fall away. And it goes on, it goes on. The list is long. But you get the point, yes? Now, in Judges 21, 25, it is summed up. Yes? What does Judges 21, 25 say? Yes. Judges 21, 25 says, In those days there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. That means they did what was right, not what was wrong. Yes? To understand. So what seemed right to them, they did that. It may not have been right to what the Lord says or to the Lord. Do you understand? Yes? So because our great, 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 great grandfather who goes by the name of Adam ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we know how to do good, Yes? We just don't know the will of God because Adam was in disobedience and he was deceived by the serpent. And the serpent is out to deceive even now. And it has deceived the culture we live in. And where it has deceived the culture so much that what God considers bad, the culture calls good. Do you understand? And that is a culture that we live in right now. That is a culture that is outside that door. That we have to face every day. You don't have to look at the door, yes? But you understand what I mean, yes? There's nobody outside that door. That's not that culture, yeah? But you know what I mean, yeah? That's a culture you all have to face at school, with your friends, with everybody. The only thing that can guide you is the word of God. Do you understand? Let's go to Isaiah 5 verse 20. Isaiah 5 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe means not wow. It means you are in a lot of trouble. If you call evil good. Do you understand? And good evil. We find that in our culture. We find that prevalent in the music, in the movies, in arts, in everything. Do you understand? We call evil good and good evil. And we put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Do you understand? Someone long time ago saw Anu making coffee for me. Yes? So every morning she saw Anu making coffee. And she got really, really not like 
she wanted to make coffee for me. So she said to Anu, let me make coffee for him. So she, and Anu said, okay. So she made coffee. And when I drank it and my friend drank it, we both had to spit out that coffee. You know why? She did not know how to make coffee. And instead of putting sugar, she put salt. And when you drank it, it went, Pah! she said, what's wrong? I said, nothing. <laughs> because the first time she's making coffee, yes? But here it says, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Would you like coffee with salt? No. We'll spit it out, no? Do you understand? Then I think I knew how to teach her. No, you don't put salt, you put sugar in coffee, Yes. Do you understand? So this is how God wants things and he wants things right. So this culture puts bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Who puts This culture puts darkness for light and light for darkness. And it basically calls what is evil in the sight of God as good. And moreover, it calls what is good as evil. Do you understand? Yes, this is the culture we live in. In that we are called to be separate. Yes, even in the church. Even in the church. This is a problem. Let's go to Hosea 4.6. Hosea 4.6. I forwarded a song called Bible Bop. It teaches you all the books of the Bible. Ask your parents to show it to you. Yes, so you will know where the books of the Bible are. Yes? Hosea 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being a priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also, I will also forget you your children. This is the Lord saying, His people means you and me, yes? Are destroyed for the lack of what? Knowledge. Knowledge of what? Gravity or Him? Him, yes? Do you understand? And because we have rejected knowledge, it's not that it's not available to us, we have rejected that, I will also reject you from being a priest. That means communicating with God. That means you will have a bronze heaven. You will not be able to communicate with God. Do you understand? Yes? And because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will forget your children also. That means the blessing of the Lord will not come on your children as well. That's why you must not forget the law of the Lord, even in the church. Do you understand? Yes? In the New Testament, in Hebrews 5.12, can you go there? Hebrews 5.12. Yes. Hebrews 5.12 says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you will come to need milk and not solid food. So by this time, you ought to be what? Teachers. We have a kitten at home, yes? And now, it's just what? Oh, too young. It's a baby kitten, yes? If you give it steak and adult food, will it digest that? No. For the baby, you must give baby food. Do you understand? So... It says, since you are all babies and you ought to be teachers, I can only give you milk and not solid food. Do you understand? Yes, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about what the scripture says. Yes? Do you understand? So, we must be thorough and thoroughly equipped with the word of God. The best that we can do for that day. Be perfect for that day. Do you understand? Yes? Whatever it is, we must sharpen our axe 
we must know the word of God for that day. Do you understand? And God will perfect that which concerns us. Yes? And we'll end with this last scriptures in Proverbs. Yeah? In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Proverbs 4, 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you getting, get what? Get understanding. Do you understand? So, someone asked me, how will I calculate the number of the beast? In Revelation 13, it says, you calculate the number of the beast. How will I calculate? I said, by with the calculator. But before that, it says, if you have wisdom, you will know. So, in this, wisdom is the principal thing. Do you understand? Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get what? Wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. And the, the understanding of what God has said to you and through the word of God. Do you understand? Is it clear? Yes? This, the importance of the Bible will only become clear when you don't have it and when you see people who are lost without it. It's not a thumping tool to hit someone else. It's first of all meant for you to correct yourself. It's a word. It's like a mirror. Do you understand? Yes? The rest will follow. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what? And what? You don't know the scripture? That is your homework. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Yes. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be what? Added unto you. So what must you seek? The kingdom of God. And that is wisdom in all Wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom. Why do you need wisdom? What is the next scripture? Can you read that, Isaac? Uh, Isaac? Uh, verse 34. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Yes? That means tomorrow and today, because it's of the fallen world, will have its trouble. And what do you need to overcome this trouble? Wisdom. And therefore, wisdom is a principal thing. In all you're getting, get understanding. Do you understand? So God has called you to be an overcomer. To overcome that. Is that clear? Yes? All right, let's pray.